and welcome to another installment of Liberty Nation Swampanomics Videocast. I'm Andrew Moran, LN's Economics Correspondent. This week, Saudi Arabia versus America. Who wins? For the past year, relations between Riyadh and Washington has significantly deteriorated because the Saudis are not bowing down to US interests. Let's hop on the Swampanomics time machine for a bit to the good old days when the annual inflation rate was around 5%. It all began in the summer of 2021 when the Biden administration pleaded with the Saudis to ramp up production to help lower energy prices and diminish the pain at the pump. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman rejected this request, irking multiple White House officials. This forced President Joe Biden to begin draining the nation's energy oil stockpiles, also known as the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, or SPR, which is now at a near 40-year low. In a fist bump scene around the world, President Biden visited MBS this past summer with hat in hand and begging for more oil. The Saudis acquiesced with a laughable 100,000 barrel expansion of production capacity. But within just a couple of months, the Saudis tergiversated and now OPEC is slashing production by 2 million barrels a day, which has again irked the United States. The result? US crude is about $90 a barrel, gasoline is nearly $4, diesel is above 5 bucks and home heating costs are projected to soar 30% this winter. Suffice it to say, the phrase of drill baby drill was directed at everybody else except for America's energy industry. But my 9,000 leases! According to Liberty Nation's Mark Angelides, the Saudi Energy Ministry suggested that the Biden administration pushed for a one-month delay on any production cut to prevent higher energy prices ahead of the November midterm elections. Now, Biden is promising consequences for the Saudis. But is this a point of no return for US-Saudi relations? Outside of the OPEC decision, it has been evident that the Saudis have been taking advantage of the weakness in America's political leadership. Let's take a look at some of the latest developments that the Saudis have taken. First, MBS took the opportunity to lecture the United States about its green energy agenda. The speech was hilarious because the Crown Prince delivered this finger-wagging moment as the administration brought its trick-or-treat bag for oil. Second, it has been widely reported that Saudi Arabia is looking to price its crude oil contract with China in the yuan. This was huge news because about 80% of global oil transactions are denominated in the US dollar. In addition, this is part of Saudi Arabia's broader transition to concentrating on expanding trade with East Asia. Third, Saudi Arabia recently hiked prices by 20 cents a barrel for all US grades, but slashed oil prices for Europe. This comes a couple of months after US buyers paid around 50 cents more for Saudi oil, the chutzpah. All this while the Saudis are increasing their relationship with China and Russia. So what's next? The most likely scenario is that more pain is ahead for US households and motorists. Domestic production is still more than 1 million barrels below pre-pandemic levels. The White House continues to undermine the US energy industry, making them hesitant about boosting operations. Refineries are under routine attack, while the Democrats aim to bolster the green economy with billions in tax dollars for a decade from now. Meanwhile, the accident between the Saudis, India, Russia, and China and potentially even Turkey if reports that Vladimir Putin wants to turn Ankara into a gas hub are correct, will be enhanced. This will only make the United States more vulnerable. But it does not have to be this way. Conditions can be so much better. The US could adopt even just a handful of the American Petroleum Institute's 10-point plan, and the nation could return to its energy independent status under the previous administration. But then this would perturb Biden's anti-fossil fuel progressive base, and the Democrats are terrified of becoming targets of hashtags on Twitter. In the meantime, grab your heated blanket, keep the kettle running, and pray for global warming this winter. This may be the only way to survive the wrath of old man winter. That's it for me this week. Please read my full Swapponomics column on the pages of LibertyNation.com, where I discuss diesel prices, the US dollar, and consumers thinking the future is bleak. Thank you. Entertaining, informative, and just plain fun. Watch Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five.
produced by conservatives for conservatives. C5 is a left free zone, hosted by Liberty Nation's Hi, Lisa, Lisa K. K. Donner, joined by a raucous, irreverent panel Mega of authors, friendly. deconstructing the leftist narratives, down. debating the hot, hot topics, topics and remembering to laugh. <laughs> Join the official conservative safe space. You only did that to piss Jeff Liberty off. Nation's The Conservative Five.